lots to talk about in this hour. We are really at crunch time in terms of uh, changes to many of our lives. Of course, you know, people in North uh, West and Greater Manchester, they've been under effectively tier two rules for uh, many, many weeks, 10 weeks plus. Uh, the North West, Greater Manchester, West Midlands, North East, Lancashire already in tier two. It's expected that Lancashire and the North East could uh, be announced that they move from tier two to tier three later today. I uh, say Manchester still fighting uh, that battle. But as I say, large parts of the country, particularly including London and Essex, uh, moving into tier two as of tonight so the rules where where we apply to you are going to be changing going to be talking more about all of that with comedian dave chawner who's joining us all this morning first up though let's talk to sean bailey he's the conservative candidate for the mayor of london and joins us now good morning to you sean Good morning, Julian. Good morning to your listeners. Good morning. Right. Well, we did see I mean, say Andy Burnham in Greater Manchester fighting hard against a uh, move from tier two to tier three, saying even if that if there was the evidence for that, it needs far more financial support uh, for uh, the businesses forced to close and all those others affected. Um, and yet we've got the mayor of London, uh, also Labour mayor, Sadiq Khan, virtually on his knees, begging the government to move London into tier two. Um, do you agree with uh, Sadiq Khan that London should be moved into a ban on household mixing indoors, at home or in hospitality venues? No. Listen, what you're seeing with Sadiq Khan, he has figured out that if he can terrorise London and move us up the chain, it's a get out of jail card for him to cover the fact that he's failed on housing, failed on crime and failed on TfL. Londoners need London to be open because the thing is, if we can work, we should be trying to come back to work because this is about employment. This is about how we feed our families, not the fact that we have a mayor who's a coward who's trying to defend his career. London needs to work. People need to feed their families. Sadiq Khan is entirely wrong about this. Well, this is an awful lot of people are really... I mean, I constantly get messages from people saying, why does Sadiq Khan want to shut down London? We know that, I mean, the, the central London economy is vital for London in terms of tax take. It's also vital for the country. One third of the entire tax take, business, uh, per income tax, everything else, it, it, for the entire country, country comes from London. When London shuts down, that affects the entire nation's finances. Um, why do you think, I mean, you say it's a get out of jail free card. Why is it in the interest of the London mayor uh, to, to try and shut down the London economy? We've had a mayor who's been anti-police, anti-housing, anti-transport, and his chickens are coming home to roost. And what he needs to do is have us focus on something else. And that big thing is Corona. And what I'm trying to say to Mayor is, do your job. Don't do your career. Run London. There's nine million people here who are relying on you to make the right decision. And the decisions he's making are absolutely catastrophic, not only for London, but for, for the whole country. And for your listeners who are beyond London, I know it can be frustrating to continue here how important London is, but it's only important because we do a lot of trade with the whole country. It's only important because it's how we generate employment. And every time a mayor, any mayor, asks for money, ask that mayor where does that money come from? It comes from us, the public. And if, if Sadiq Khan shuts down the biggest business hub in this country, in fact, in all of Europe, where do we think we're getting this magic money tree from? They're not interested in us. They're not interested in your family. They're interested in their careers. We need someone who has the guts, who, 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 has, who has the integrity, who we can trust to run London, and that is not Sadiq Khan. Uh, this is the thing, there's, there's ongoing issue. People talk about, you know, health v wealth. And, oh, I mean, whenever I say we shouldn't be shutting down the economy, shutting down our lives, and then the obvious response will be, don't you care about people dying? And the answer is, yes, I absolutely do. And this is about trying to save the most lives. People seem to think that businesses that someone has spent 30 years building up, I'm not talking about multimillionaires, I'm talking about corner shops, I'm talking about local cafes, I'm talking about small traders, those, those publicans and the like. Businesses people have spent years building up, People who are uh, going to be out of a job possibly for, for years and years now. It's not just them losing their livelihoods. We know that the cost of people losing work, is, is, it, it, costs their, it costs their health, it costs their marriages, they lose their homes, their children move out of the schools. We, we, we know the long-term effects of this are absolutely huge. And everyone seems to think it's like, oh, we'll lose a few jobs, but it'll be OK in, in a few months' time. The reality is it's going to be huge. It won't be OK. If you if you look at um, since um, uh, we've been losing basically 3000 jobs a day. And if we have this circuit breaker, that that process will accelerate. And I'd ask anybody listening to this Labour voter or not. Right. What would you do if you lose your job? How catastrophic would that be for your family? How stressful would that be? What do we what would that do to your health? I, I bumped into a guy the other day and he, and he looked me in the eye 
and he said to me he has a toothache and he's had a toothache for the longest time yep. he can't get it dealt with what are we doing about undiagnosed cancer what are we doing about the mental health of our children none of these things seem to be on Sadiq Khan's mind the only thing that's on his mind is his career and we'd be much more likely to support the man if he did the right thing by London he, he, he saw that the government were going to make a change and he tried to announce it as his own. The man is despicable. He's, he's not trustworthy. Even if, you, even if you're not a Tory and you're listening to this, I get it, right? But look, we're dealing with a man now who's not trustworthy. So I, 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 did think, I did think his urge to jump on the telly after, uh, well, before we knew that we were going to actually officially get that uh, announcement and then to jump on the telly again after Andy Burnham was getting lots of praise from people, I thought was quite extraordinary. Let me just read some of the stats to you in terms of London. Well, he says that we should definitely move oh, we definitely move into tier two because we've got a crisis. Uh, can I point out that, that the average hospital admissions a day right now with COVID is 40. There are a total uh, of about, well, the total on the 14th of October, so two days ago, 389 people in hospital in, the, in London uh, with COVID out of a population of nine and a half million, 389. Um, 505 admissions on the 23rd of March. That's what we had at the time as opposed to 40. We are talking about barely, barely rising admissions right now and 90 2% uh, are lower than the peak. And uh, as of the uh, beginning of this month, so a couple of weeks ago, obviously this figures would have gone up slightly, but only slightly. We are talking about 1.5% of all hospital beds in the capital being occupied by COVID patients. We've got to get this in perspective, haven't we? We have to. And, and, and let's be clear. I support tier two because I'm trying to avoid a lockdown. A lockdown would be catastrophic to our children's education, to our employment prospects and to our health. Anybody who thinks that we'll have a, a circuit break, as it's been named, and it's health versus wealth, it is not. It is wealth and health that will go out the window. We've got to do our best to hold on. And when I stood in front of Sadiq, he took a cheap shot and tried to say I was badgering people to get back to work. It's not about badgering people to get back to work. If you can, let's work, because we are an ecosystem. And Sadiq Khan is killing that ecosystem. Okay. We are plugged into the whole country. We've got to get this country moving. Sadiq Khan is anti that. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. Sadiq Khan, if you want to come on the show and answer back any day of the week, mate, I will make room for you. Sean Bailey, Conservative candidate for the Mayor of London. Thank you for that. It's got a tweet from uh, Brooksy saying, London, London, London. Mate, we've talked about Manchester, Liverpool, Leicester. We, Essex, we talk about loads of different places. Right now, happening to be focusing on London. But there are plenty of other places we talk about all the time. I, I think you'll find this is the least London-centric show you could possibly get. Uh, Dave Chaudhary's comedian, he's joining me all this morning. I mean, that was a pretty powerful diatribe there from Sean Bailey about basically Sadiq Khan. This is all about, uh, you know, his, his playing politics rather than actually the people of London. What do you make of that? I, to be honest, I, I don't really know enough about Sadiq Khan. He seems all right. I'd, I'd buy a I'm, Hey, I voted for him. the guy. I voted for him. Yeah, he, I mean, he's got a smiley face. I mean, so this is the thing that I don't really get of like with with mayors and stuff. I actually think that most people don't really know the politics, the policies, all of the little things yeah. that go on day to day. It's only when you vote for them. Yeah, indeed. I have to say I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure you get my vote again. I thought best of, best of some not very great options last time round because some people are pointing out, actually, <laughs> given that we didn't have elections in May, local elections in May, the mandate was for four years. He hasn't even got a mandate, uh, as, as no one in local government has at the moment because they're, they're over overdue that mandate. Um, again, there are just still some very big issues we need to discuss in terms of where we are in terms of the, 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 the risk of this uh, this uh, virus. Um, again, I've, I mention this guy all the time, but it's so worth mentioning. Professor Carl Hennigan, the uh, b b professor, of evidence-based medicine at the University of Oxford has said there is no evidence uh, for a second lockdown, circuit breaker, whatever you want to call it, but also has said that their evidence, very, very clear in terms of hospital COVID patients. Again, we're not seeing excess mortality. We are no official statistics, not a matter of opinion. You can't disagree with that fact. We are not seeing excess mortality right now, uh, but also that 17.5% of all patients in hospital right now with COVID caught the virus in hospital. Small point worth making.